broadcast live fellowship is family <clears throat> well y'all on it tonight five four three two one good evening fellowship uh facebook and twitch followers um this is joy back tonight with you we call the ready for christ i also have bill in the room with us tonight Howdy. Jacob's with us. Hey. Herschel's with us tonight. Howdy. I believe Daniel's in here with us tonight as far as David too. Good evening. And tonight we will have Herschel leading us in our fellowship for this week as well. Um, I believe he will be in the book of Mark tonight. Um, if, you, if you have time tonight to join along with us, we would greatly appreciate it. Sorry, it's, it's going a little bit different tonight. Um, be honest with you we're all a little bit tired but never too tired to spread the word of god to you um so thank you for joining us tonight and we're going to get kicked off and we'll ask bill to lead us with a word of prayer tonight so we can get this rolling all right father god thank you for this day thank you for the beautiful sunshine and weather you've given after a week of cold and dark and gloomy rain thank you for thank you for that for the health that you give us thank you for for all of the blessings that many of us take for granted daily from from the moment you wake us up to the moment you give us peace and rest from a tired and weary day lord god tonight please put your words and your message in this conversation let us let us to understand what you would have us to understand please lord if they if there's anybody listening who is trying to find their way closer to you. Let this night be the night that they hear, feel, you touch their heart, you move in their heart, Lord God. Uh, For anybody that's fighting dark and lost in gloomy battles, Lord God, let, let this be the inspiration that shows them there is a better way. There is a way out of their burdens and their troubles, and there is peace and joy and it all comes through you lord yes, please lord, bless yes, lord. bless bless this message please lord help helping guide us to to be truthful and to um portray your word the way you would have it taught yes, lord. lord lord god all these things i ask in jesus christ's name amen amen amen, amen. <clears throat> so that being said i will turn it over to herschel and lead it on brother okay so we're gonna start things off in the the book of mark chapter three um and we're actually going to start at the end of this chapter uh on verse 31 um we're going i'm not going to give a synopsis of the book because we're going to be bouncing between a couple books tonight um i'm not going to give like i said the synopsis we're going to be bouncing two or three books and so i apologize for that but i wanted to do it because it shows that this is not just a message in a single chapter in a single book and within the Bible, this is a message that's spread out across the Bible, and it's very consistent in what it says. Uh, so starting in verse 31, Mark 3, it says, There came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. Verse 32, And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. So what's going on here? There's, there's Jesus is a master following because people have heard about what he's doing. They've seen what he's doing. The message is spread. He's got a, a massive amount of people following him. And his family shows up, and they ask to basically get up there close to him, right? Um, the, to me, this is, this is telling because they're on the perimeter, outside looking in, and it's a good indicator of what's, what's really going on, right? They're, they're partly distant because physically they're, they're distant, but they're also spiritually distant. John, in the book of John, it tells us that Jesus' brothers, his half-brothers, were, were not followers in, the, in his ways until after he was resurrected, until they came and saw him resurrected. All right, so not only are they distant physically, they're also distant spiritually. Uh, they're outside and unaware of his purpose, uh, and so they're willing on the basis of their human thinking to intervene. Because if you, I don't, I don't want to do this, but if you go back up a couple of verses, it says that they, they basically thought he was beside himself. They thought he was nuts. Um, and they, 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 in their human rationality, came to intervene in what, in reality, is the purpose of God in general, right? As, 
as we seek, this is this is just like us, because as we seek to serve the Lord, we too will be misunderstood by our families. Not even Jesus Christ was exempt from that. Mm -hmm. uh, we must seek God for the hearts of our family members while also relying on the Holy Spirit to be earnestly faithful to the Lord during that long journey or, of our walk with Christ. And like I said, that's what I feel like those two are going. So we'll move on to, to, to 33 and 34 here because this is where, where it really starts getting good. Right? And he answered the, them saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around about on them which sat about him and said, Behold, my mother and my brethren. Right? Jesus had a human family. He loved them a lot. But he uses these two verses to make an extremely important statement about the body and kingdom of Christ. The point is not to put down his human family. Obviously, he knew who they were, right? Mm -hmm. But to show that the souls in the crowd are his family. They bear a spiritual bond that goes deeper than the physical bond. And in verse 35, you'll see it says, Forever who shall do the will of God, the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. So the identifying mark of his true family is their knowing and doing the will of God. Mm -hmm. Think think about it this way. Uh, if you're And Bill, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to use you as an example. Yes, uh, sir. So Bill, for those out there, Bill has an adopted son. He's a great guy, right? Um, if you're an orphan, you don't adopt your parents. Right? If you're adopted, you don't adopt your parents. They adopt you. Mm -hmm. Right? If you're if your adoptive parents are, are the name Cercer, right? Mm -hmm. You you now attend Cercer family dinners with the parents and the children. You share a bedroom at night with Cercer siblings. When the teacher calls out for attendance and says Cercer, you raise your hand, just like mm -hmm. all your brothers and sisters do. And you do not do this because you decided to play the role of a Cercer, but because someone <laughs> went to the to, to to you and said you will be a smir a, a, a Cercer. Mm -hmm. On that day, you became the child of someone and the siblings of others. Only in reality, and in this context, your name is Insertor. It's Christian. Mm -hmm. Named after the one from whom you were adopted. Amen. If, Amen. Ephesians 1.5 Ephesians says exactly that. Mm -hmm. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You're, mm -hmm. you're a part. Once you become a Christian, you are a part of the family of God. Amen. In Hebrews, Amen. in Hebrews two eleven, for both he that sanctify and they who are sanctified are all one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Right, brethren means brother. Correct. So, just like I said, that multiple cases here it shows that once you become a follower, you are you are not just. Uh, a member in the church. You know, it's not a membership. It's not a club, right? It's a family. That's right. I'll it's be, not a dis. Go ahead. Sorry. I'll I'll be honest with you. I, I'm learning that uh, I I love my earthly family. Don't get me wrong. I, I was born into that family, and I do love them dearly. But I miss my church family way more than I miss them. And I'm glad, you know, like my my brother on earth goes to church with us there i'm I'm glad of that too because you know that that's kind of a double whammy not only is your brother in your christ but he's a brother in the world too but i i miss y'all way more than just you know having a family reunion or something like that because i know that you guys are going to lift me up just as much as i try to lift you up and that's the way the body of christ is supposed to be oh yeah oh yeah well that's the thing the family uh, the, the, it's not it's unlike many and my personal just being honest um earthly family the the, the family of, of christ is not a dysfunctional family with family members who are estranged from one another it's a fellowship when god called you into the fellowship with his son jesus christ which he does in a verse we'll I'll talk about that here in just a second he also called you into fellowship with the whole family now where's where does it say that at Right. Let's be honest. All this stuff comes from the Bible. This isn't my opinion. First Corinthians one nine and ten. God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Verse 10, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Amen. Amen. This, this, is, this is what it's about. I mean, salvation is, is important, but it's, it's the most important. But when you become a part of Jesus Christ, like I said, you become a part of a family. It's not, if you have, and once again, we'll talk about this a little later, but when you get into a church family, it's not, like it says here, you should be perfectly joined together. And there should be no division among you. Now, inevitably, humans, we as humans, and, and get self in the way, we get in fleshly ways, and that leads to division. But that is not the church family's fault. That's individual's fault. That's, That's right, your self in the way. Amen. Which brings me to my next point. It's no polite and formal fellowship. It's a body bound together by our individual decisions, but also bound together by far more importantly, a spirituality in knowing Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you're if you say you're a Christian, you are mistaken, and I'm gonna step on some toes here, but you are mistaken if you think I'm not a part of the family. Or the more common well, I don't think I need church. Right? The fact is That's you need right. church because as Paul said to the Corinthians, first Corinthians twelve, twenty through twenty one, but now are they many members, yet but one body. And That's the right. eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. I the reason I can I can oh, contest to that to that there, Herschel. Uh as many of you know, I'm missing a part of my body. And when you're missing a member of your body, your body doesn't function the way it should. And that's the same way it is in a church family. When one member's missing, the whole body suffers. Mm -hmm. well, I believe it was at Matthew 18. When two or more gather in my name, I am there. Absolutely. And that's, I'm glad you brought that up, Joey, because I want to clarify that. When, when, if I go through this and at some point I'm saying the church, the church, the church, that building we all meet in on Sunday is a building. It's not a church until we go inside of it. Right? That's, That's right. right. Amen. So when I say church, I am talking about the body of Christ. The like the followers, the people, the believers are the church. Amen. That's right. I just want to clarify. I'm glad you brought that up, Joe. And another thing, uh, Jacob, and just the uh, uh, saying what you, I'm agreeing with you, but on, from a different perspective, right? You know, you said you, you when a body part's missing, you your body knows it. Yeah, you can feel it, right? Well, right. when a when a single body part is detached from the body, it decays. Yep. And that is that's, that's what happens. That's exactly what happens. It's a lot easier, and we're gonna get in that here very shortly. It's a lot easier to go wayward and get into yourself and get into the wrong ways and get into sin. Let's be blunt. When Amen. you are doing things by yourself, because because you don't have the accountability. What are you what are you gonna do? You're gonna tell yourself not to go do the things you want to do? That's right. So go ahead, Joy. Uh, I find it easier to stay out of sin once you are in the body of Christ because the body of Christ is is supposed to compassionately keep you on the right road to righteousness. We're supposed to lift each other up and, and even let each other know when we're doing something wrong. It's it's not because we're better than the other person. It's because we want to see that person walk in the light of Christ the same way that we are trying to as well. Granted, yes, we all know that we're not perfect, but at the same time, uh, Herschel, if I see something that you may be doing wrong, I should come up to you and say, hey, maybe maybe this is like this. But at the same time, if I'm doing something wrong, I should be able to take that too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And like, like I said, we're, we're, uh, we, we're going to get into that because actually we're, we're, we're finna get into that very, very soon. Um, when I was studying and, and, and trying to, to put all this stuff together for tonight, uh, I was looking at stuff and I found, you know how on, on the internet you can find these little comment sections at the bottom of the page, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. I found a page, it was on a, a, a website where I was reading uh, parts of the Bible at work because I can't take my Bible, well I can take my Bible to work, I just choose not to because it get messed up. Uh, so I'll read on the internet. And uh, right at the bottom of this specific Mark uh, 31 through 33, 31 through 35, 
there was a comment. It was a single comment by itself. 